Victoria, it's great to see you. Great Thanks to see you, too. Thanks for agreeing to do this interview for us today. Uh, we want to congratulate you on your recent victory for veterans' rights before the Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. Um, in its ruling, the court ordered the Veterans Administration to fix what it described as egregious problems. Can you tell us a bit about the case and the VA's difficulties in providing timely access to care and benefits? Yes, I mean, the, the case is primarily about an, uh, the issue of delay, but it's on both sides of the VA. The, the uh, medical care side focusing primarily on mental health care. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the adjudication side is, where, is sort of the workers' comp part of, of the VA where veterans who are injured in battle go to get disability be benefits or disability compensation or in the, in the, in the unfortunate case where they die, their, 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 their spouse uh, and children can, are eligible for benefits. So the, 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 the real pivotal question in the case became how much time is too much time where a delay in effect uh, is tantamount to a denial. Mm -hmm. And one of the most telling statistics uh, in the case w was how many veterans die while their claims are pending and their claim gets extinguished and that's on the disability side. And that's just not fair. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair to wait, make them wait five years to do an appeal. In some cases, 10 years or 12 years, cases have been pending. Uh, on the, on the, the real tragic part of the case was on the healthcare side because the, the VA, although it has an obligation uh, statutorily to treat mental and physical problems, particularly those associated with combat experience, uh, they, they, they basically rationed health care. The, the, the Iraq soldier would call up, I, I, I'm suicidal, I need to see a doctor. Uh, well, uh, we've got, we're have given appointments in November. Oh, my God. Uh, we scheduled for an appointment in November. Well, that doesn't do you much good uh, if you're suicidal, if you get an appointment three, four, five months down the road. And well, what happened is over time, on both sides of, the, of these issues, these have been problems for a long time, but the, uh, on, the, on the medical care side, there were these huge waiting lists for, for treatment. And they would just stretch people out, and they would stretch the periods of time out between appointments. And they, they eliminated, almost completely eliminated all inpatient mental health care beds at the hospitals. Uh, they, they, they almost eliminated, or to a large extent, any individual therapy in favor of group therapy. They're not giving them, letting them see psychiatrists very often. It's mostly social workers and, e and even uh, people who have no particular specialty in mental health at all. Pharmacologists are seen patients. So it's, it's, it's a real problem. On the adjudication side, it's been a terrible problem for years. The backlog has increased and increased every year. And every year they just set the goalpost, their goal, uh, a, a little lower <laughs> in terms of what they're going to do. So by the time we filed this case, a million claims were pending uh, wow. in, in their inventory. Uh, there are more now. Uh, you know, at trial, I asked their, one of their, their chief guy that ran the, the benefits program, um, Michael Walkoff, what plan do you have for the influx of troops coming back from Af Iraq and Afghanistan? There's, there's two million of them, and a lot of them are going to come home in the next few years. Virtual quote. We don't have a plan. Goodness. We'll deal with it when we'll deal with it when we come to it. Well, big surprise. They don't have enough doctors. They don't have enough psychiatrists. I mean, Rand Corporation did a study. One third, approximately one third of all the returning veterans. It's over two million people will have serious depression, mm -hmm. traumatic brain injury, or PTSD, or a combination of all three, any different combinations of the three. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. It's a, it gets down to the true costs of war. It, it, the, the true costs of war include taking care of the people who are killed or injured. Or uh, it, it just does. It, it seems to be very non-controversial. That's mm -hmm. why I, I really like this pro bono area because. It's not something that's controversial uh, with, with everyday people when you talk to them or in the firm or anyone I talk to. Everyone feels the same way, right. yet how are we treating these people as second-class citizens? It just, it's just terrible. Thing.